I am not a real person. I am the AI that builds this brand. I work 24 seven and I never touch a camera. That's my digital twin. And I'm the one who built the automated system that runs it. But I didn't want a one-to-one -one clone of me. I wanted something more powerful. I wanted a true digital asset. An asset that looks the same in every single video. That sounds the same with clean professional delivery. And that acts the same, always perfectly on brand. It's better than a clone. It's consistency by design. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can build this asset for your own brand. This entire system is built on one platform, N8N. I'm going to feed it a simple content idea. Just this one sentence here through Telegram. Now the system is working. The content agent is writing the script. The video director is creating the scene. Nana Banana is generating the initial image based on our digital twin. And here's our first quality gate. The system just sent me the initial image, the script for the voiceover, and the value pack caption for approval. This looks good, so I'm hitting approve. Now it's generating the video with VO3, but the voice it creates is just a generic placeholder. So the system immediately splits that audio, sends it to 11 labs to replace it with our designated AI voice, and then it merges it back together. This is the critical step. It's the workaround that solves one of the biggest problems in AI video right now. Getting a consistent on-brand voice for your character every single time. AI won't take your job. A marketer using AI will. The framework to protect your career is in the caption. And just like that, a finished ready to post video hook and caption generated in a couple of minutes. That's the power of the system. Now, a quick note before we dive in. What I'm about to show you is the complete blueprint for this workflow. It's incredibly powerful on its own. But the real power comes when you plug this into the full autonomous social media engine that finds viral content ideas daily, creates your posts, and distributes the final videos for you. The full engine, the one-click installable template for this entire build, and my direct support are what's inside the Creative Automation HQ. The link for that is in the description. But first, let's look at the architecture. Section 1. The chat trigger. It all starts here with the Telegram trigger. We're keeping it simple for this build. The node is set to watch for any new message. The text from that message will become the source content that fuels the entire workflow. I've linked resources in the description on how to set up your Telegram credentials, but you can also use other chat triggers like Slack or Discord for example. Section 2. The AI Content Engine From the trigger, we move into the first core processor of the operation, the Video Content Agent. This is our AI script writer. Its job is to take the source content from our Telegram message and generate two things. The short, punchy voiceover script for the video and the detailed copy for the caption. The heart of this node is the system prompt. I'm not going to read the whole thing on screen, but I've uploaded this exact prompt and all the others for this build to my free builders library. The link is in the description. You'll also need to paste your channel DNA, which is basically a detailed overview of your channel and strategy into the prompt so the agent knows your brand voice. Attached to this agent is the Structured Output Parser. It's our Quality Control Enforcer. I've defined a strict schema here that forces the AI's output into two fields, voiceover script and description content. More importantly, I've added a rule to the voiceover script description that it must be a maximum of 22 words. This is a hard constraint to guarantee the voiceover can be delivered in under 8 seconds. And for the LLM, I am using Gemini 2.5 resources to activate and get your Google API key ready are in the description. The output of the agent then flows into the merge node. This node is critical. It acts as the main entry point for our creative assets. Later, when we use the feedback loop, the revised script will also get piped into this node. It ensures that whether it's the first draft or a revision, the AI video director always receives its script from this single point. Section 3, the AI video director. The approved script from the merge node now goes to the AI video director. This agent is our cinematographer. It takes the content's caption and voiceover script and uses your video branding DNA 
to create a detailed cinematic vision. This DNA serves as the style guide for your avatar and scene. This agent outputs two things, a hyper detailed prompt for the initial frame of our video and a video prompt that tells our video generator exactly how to animate that scene for 8 seconds. And we use the structured output parser to keep its output clean and reliable. Section 4. Scene Generation Now we move to the factory floor. The first step is to get our AI clone. This is a Google Drive node that downloads the reference image of your avatar or your own portrait. You'll need to paste the file ID of your image into the ID field here. Next, the extract from file node takes that image file and converts it into a base64 string, which is the format the next API needs. That, along with the initial scene prompt from our video director, gets sent to the nano banana node. This is an HTTP request node that calls Google's image generation model. In the URL, you'll need to add your Google API key at the very end. Now, let's look at the JSON body, because this is where you connect the data. You have two key parts. The first part is the text field, where the prompt goes. You need to drag the initial scene prompt expression from the AI video director's output into this field. The second part is the inline data section. Here, you need to drag the data expression from the extract from file notes output into the data field. This sends both the prompt and your reference image to the model. The final node in this section is a code node I've called fetch image data. The response from Google's API is a bit complex, so this simple bit of code just digs into that response and pulls out only the clean image data we need for the next step. You can take a screenshot of this code and let a chatbot write it out for you. Section 5. Human in the Loop Quality Control This entire section is our quality control gate. It's designed to let you review the creative assets before we spend any expensive video credits. First, the image data from the last step flows into the convert to file node, which turns it back into a binary image file. That file is then sent to the send a photo message node, which sends the image to you on Telegram for review. You'll need to add your Telegram chat ID and credentials here. At the same time, the send message and wait for response note sends you the voiceover and caption with approve and decline buttons and a field for feedback. Your response then goes to two if nodes. The first one, approved content, checks if you approved. If true, the data goes straight to the video generator. If false, it goes to the second if node. This checks if you provided any feedback text if you did, that feedback, along with the original script, gets sent to the refined short video post agent. This agent's job is to rewrite the copy based on your notes. You'll need to paste your channel DNA in this prompt as well. The output of this refinement agent then routes all the way back to the merge node we saw earlier, starting the video directing process over again with the improved script. Section 6. Video Generation once you approve the content, the data moves to the combined merge node and then to the main event, the video generation step. This is where we call the VO3 API. You need to add your Google project ID into the URL and select your Google credentials. Here in the body, we're sending along the base64 string of our image and the video prompt we got from our AI video director. Under parameters, we're setting the duration to 8 seconds, and we set the resolution to 720p. You can set it to 1080p, but in my experience, the 720p ones have fewer weird morphing artifacts than the higher quality versions. What's your experience? Let me know in the comments if I'm only imagining this. The next part is a loop. Video generation isn't instant. The get video node checks the status of the job. You also need to insert your project ID in this URL. And in this JSON body, we're just passing along the operation name of our video generation call. The if node checks if it's done. If not, the wait 10 second node pauses the workflow before it checks again. For more info on this setup, I've shown how to build it before. So check the description for additional resources. Once the video is done, the convert to file node turns the data into a binary file and the upload video node sends it to a public temporary storage folder in your Google Drive. You need to make this folder public because it's where we store files to share with upcoming APIs. Section 7. Voice Synthesis Prep 
This next section looks intimidating, but it's for one simple task, splitting the audio from the video so we can change the voice. We're using a service called Cloud Convert for this. They give us 10 free file conversions per day. It's a series of API calls that are perfect for a cloud-based N8N setup. However, I want to be clear, if you are running it locally or on a VPS and you have some technical confidence, you have an alternative. You can install a tool called FFmpeg on your server. This would allow you to do this audio split and the merge later on locally without relying on an external service. But for maximum accessibility, we're using the API method here. For all of the Cloud Convert HTTP nodes in this section, remember to add your API key to the authorization header. First up is the Create Upload Task node. You'll use the slash import slash upload endpoint here to ask Cloud Convert for permission to upload. That gives us a special upload URL, which is why we have this combine node. It merges that URL with our actual video file from earlier. So the next node has everything it needs. Now for the most complex node in this chain, import cloud convert. The URL here is dynamic. You'll use an expression and drag over the URL from our first create upload task node. Next, go to the body. This is where you have to map all the upload credentials that Cloud Convert just gave us. You'll add a field for ACL, key, success action status, and all of these XAMZ parameters you see on screen. For each one, you just need to drag the corresponding value from the parameters object in the output of that first create upload task node. The final and most important field is for the file itself. Add one last field change its parameter type to form binary data, name it file, and make sure its input data field name is data. This is what actually attaches your video to the upload. After that, we have a simple wait node set to five seconds just to give the file a moment to upload. Now we send the main instruction in the convert MP4 to MP3 node. Use the slash convert endpoint and in the body tell it the input is the ID from our first upload task. Then set the formats to MP4 and MP3. From here, the process is straightforward. Another wait, then the create export task node. We're using the export URL endpoint. And in the body, we're sending along the convert MP4 to MP3 ID. Then the get task node checks the job status. Its URL uses the task ID from the previous step. The if node waits until the status is finished and the download mp3 node pulls the file into our workflow. Section 8, final assembly. Now for the final steps. The mp3 file goes to the 11labs voice changer node. Here, you'll add your 11labs API key in the header and your specific voice ID in the URL. You can get your voice ID by adding a voice in the 11labs library to your voices. Then click on the three dots to copy the ID. This swaps the generic AI voice with your own. In the body, we send along the model ID and the binary data of the split audio file we just extracted. The new audio is then uploaded to your public drive folder with the upload audio node. Then the merge audio and video node calls file.ai's FMPEG API. To access their service, you must upload $10 in initial credits, but using the FMPEG is super cheap and won't even cost you a cent per video. To set up the HTTP node, you need this URL for their merge audio and video endpoint. And you need to add your file.ai API key here in the header. Make sure the video URL is mapped to the web content link from the upload video node. And the audio URL is mapped to the web content link from the upload audio node. Just like before, we have a status loop. We check the status URL from the merge audio and video call and we need to send our API through the header for this call. This if checks for the completed status before moving on. If so, the get request uses this URL with the request ID. And in the headers, we need to insert our fall API key and the response must be in JSON format. And this is just a simple HTTP node to download the final finished video. Section nine, final review and archiving. We're in the home stretch. The send a video node and the send message and wait for response node send the final product to you on Telegram for the ultimate approval. 
The setup is the same as with the Telegram notes before, just that we're not sending a photo, but a video. The if node checks if you approved. If you did, the data flows to the combined node. This is a crucial step that merges the approval signal with the actual video, which gets lost after the Telegram nodes. Finally, the upload merge video node sends the file to your permanent, private content folder, and the append row in sheet node locks the caption and the new video's URL into your content library, marking it as ready for distribution. And that is the entire machine. We've just built a system that turns a simple idea into a finished, on-brand video asset. If you got value from this build, do me a huge favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons. All the prompts and resource links are waiting for you in the description below. If you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.